there. No, this is the, the best hotel we've got in town. But I think they'll fit you very, very nice. Thank you. I gather you're familiar with this town. <laughs> well, I ought to be. I come through here twice a week. Well, then perhaps you could tell me where I might find a man named William Barney. I hear they call him Billy the Kid. Oh, Billy. Yes, he works out on Tundle Ranch. He gets into town on business every so often. But this being Saturday, I... Saturday night, you'll find him over at the saloon with one of his girls. I hear he's very fast with a gun. Fastest man in this territory. Is that right? Well, I, I couldn't rightly say about that, ma'am, because it'd be sort of a toss-up between him and Pat Garrett. Pat Garrett is the sheriff. That's right. Mr. Bonney is the man I want to see. Thank you, driver. You're very welcome, ma'am. <laughs> Well, that is the prettiest cargo you've delivered in months. <laughs> you uh, come all by yourself? No, I took her aboard at Del Paso. You know, she's an odd one, Pat. How so? Well, she asked me, who's the fastest gun in town? Now, what's a woman like that want to know about the fastest man with the gun? I don't know, Clem, but I'm sure going to make it my business to find out. <laughs> all right. I like to know the names of all strangers in town. You're very efficient. Well, let's say I try. Will you be staying in town long? Just as long as it takes me to complete my business. And uh, what is your business? Land. I'm a speculator. I've heard this county is on the verge of a cattle boom. Miss Ardine, are you in some sort of trouble? No. And why are you so interested in knowing who might be the fastest gun in this county? Oh, the coach driver. Just the idle curiosity of an Easterner, Sheriff. Good evening, Patrick. You in town early, Billy. Well, it's a Saturday night, boy. You wouldn't... You wouldn't want to waste that, would you? Miss Chardine, this is William Bonney. Yes, I've heard of Mr. Bonney. Oh, have you? You heard of me? Yes, I read about you in my hometown newspaper. You'd won some sort of a sharpshooting contest. Oh, Billy's won all sorts of shooting contests. He's real fast with a gun. That should interest you, Miss Yardine. Yes, I'm fascinated. Well, I um, hope you enjoy your stay in town, Miss Yardine. That newspaper article didn't do you justice, Mr. Barney. Oh, yeah, how's that? What do you mean? With the way it described you, I expected a hardened, vicious gunman. <laughs> well, I guess that depends on who you talk to, right? Well, I really shouldn't keep you standing here. Saturday night, I... You're not here in town, are you? I mean, alone? All by yourself? I'm afraid I am. I was just about to go out and have supper. You're not going to eat by yourself, are you? Are you? you? Mind if I go along with you to keep you company? Thank you, Mr. Barney. I'd enjoy that very much. Fine. <laughs> Where well, you headed in the buggy? I'm taking Nita Jardine out here to look the old Richard's place again. Really fancy dance for a buggy ride. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's, uh, she's quite a fancy woman, but... You've been seeing a great deal of her this past week. Yeah, I don't know. She hired me to drive her around the county. She's paying me. Oh. What does she want from you, Billy? What do you mean? She came here looking for you. I'd like to know why. Oh, Patrick, you ain't jealous. Oh, she took a shine to me instead of someone else, right? Billy, she had a reason for wanting to meet you. Excuse me, Patrick. I don't want to keep Miss Nita waiting. Ah. 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 Oh, yeah. You want 
to tell me why you, you came to Lincoln looking for me? I guess I haven't been very clever. No? <laughs> you, you didn't know anything about that, that land I showed you today. All right, Billy. I haven't been honest. I did come here to find you. What? I wanted to hire your gun. What? To kill a man before he kills me. Who is he? My husband. Well, there's got to be a reason for that. You want to you tell me what it is? He was everything bad. A bully. A thief. And when he had to be a killer. Where is he now? In prison. For robbing and shooting a neighbor of ours. He gets out tomorrow. He wrote to me that he knows where I am and he's coming after me. He'll be here in another four days. I've got no choice but to keep running from him. You still want to hire my gun after this afternoon? You're playing games with me, Billy. No. I know you now. You're not the kind to be hired to kill. Take me back to town. I'll leave on tomorrow's stage. Wait a second. You don't need to run, either. You don't, you don't need to. But I have no choice, Billy. I'm his wife. Well, now, wait a minute. He has a legal right to see me. There's no way the wait, law can wait, keep him away wait from Wait a minute, Nita. I'm going to... I'm going to keep him out of Lincoln. What do you mean? I'm going to have a little talk with him before he gets to town. He's hot-headed and he's fast with a gun. He might kill you. I'll make him listen to reason, one way or another. Hey, you've been looking for me, Patrick. What, uh, what's on your mind? I don't think you're going to like this, Billy. I wasn't satisfied with the reasons Nita Jardine gave me for being in town, so I wrote a letter to the police chief in St. Louis asking some questions. I got his answer this morning. Billy, what would you say if I told you that she's a married woman? She's got a husband back in Missouri. I'd say his name was Ben Jardine. That about five years ago, he was sentenced to prison for robbery and murder. And that he just got out last week. Ah, she told you, huh? That's right, Patrick. She told me. Ben Jardine's a dangerous man. Yeah, that's what Nita said. She came in to get away from him. He's coming after her. Did she ask you to kill him, Billy? Oh, come on up, Billy. What are you talking about? Billy, I asked you a question. I want an answer now. The answer's no. But he better stay away from her. As her husband, he's got a right to see her. Because of any trouble, I'll take care of it. You won't have to. I'll take care of it myself. Billy, are you so blind that you can't see she's using you? No, I don't think so, Patrick. I think you've been wearing that badge so long you can't tell a decent person when you see one. Sheriff, have you come to arrest me for something? No, Miss Jardine, I've come to... Well, I guess I've come to apologize. May I come in? Apologize for what? Misjudging you for thinking things about you that I had no right to. Oh? You see, when a beautiful woman like yourself comes into town unescorted with a story like yours, well, I have to wonder why she's come here. What sort of mischief she may be up to. And what did you decide about me? Am I planning a robbery or a murder? I don't think you'll like my answer to that. I checked with the town you came from. I know about your husband. I'd rather not talk about him. Why didn't you divorce him? He'd kill me if I did. Why didn't you come to me? How could I ask your help? We are legally married. You'd have no reason to keep us apart if he came looking for me. You could have given me a reason. Same reason you gave Billy? I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe this will give you the idea. What if 
I tell Billy you broke in here? Forced your attentions on me. You wouldn't do a thing like that. We're two of a kind, neither you and me. We're tough. We know exactly what we want. And we mean to get it any way we can. Do we? Mm -hmm. And just what is it that I want? Your husband dead. Preferably by legal means and a better man to take his place. That isn't why I came here. Uh, well, in that case, it won't bother you to know that uh, Billy won't be killing anyone for you. Well, I mean to lock him up the minute your husband hits town. So you see, honey, it's uh, got to be me or nobody. Why should you care what happens to me? You don't seem the kind of man to be wearing a badge. Oh, I never let it stand in my way. It's up to you to prove that. I will. When's your husband due here? Thursday morning. I've got a picture of him. And so have I. On a wanted poster. I'll know him. I'll be here waiting. For one of you. Well, there's just one thing. Uh, you better handle Billy. Handle him? It won't be easy to make a clean break with him. I have no intention of making a clean break. I'll just keep him waiting. If you should let me down, I'm sure Billy wouldn't. I like about a horse. Yeah. You can tell real quick if they're thinking of something. You're too good to me, Billy. I have no right to involve you in the mess I've made of my life. Getting out of a mess needs it is kind of a special to your mind. I get a lot of practice at it. What's the matter? You seem different. Somehow you've changed. I don't mean to be different. Sorry, Billy. I'm afraid this isn't one of my better days. <laughs> Sutton, she's got something on her mind. Her husband? No. It's a man. But it ain't him. And it ain't me. Even if you're right, it's no concern of yours, Billy. I think it is, Patrick. Now, we've been friends a long time. And I'd hate to have to put an end to it by putting a bullet in you. Billy, whatever else you may think, I am your friend. Well, I hope you're right, Patrick. I sure hope so. Far off, Johnny. Hold out your gun. Come on, Sheriff. My name is Garrett, and I'm kind of choosy about who I let ride into town. I haven't broken any law. I bet you haven't. And I'm going to make sure that you don't. That's why you're going to turn around and ride back where you came from. We don't have room for gunslingers in Lincoln County. Me a gunslinger? Well, that's a laugh. I never was good enough for the gun for it to go to my head. Now, after five years of swinging a sledge in a prison road gang, look at my hands. Your aim was pretty good five years ago. Good enough to kill a man. I've served my time, Sheriff. I'm free and clear now, and my wife's waiting for me in town. Jardine, how did you know where your wife was? I paid someone to keep tabs on her. Every minute these past five years. Look, I've traveled 500 miles to settle things with her, and there's no legal way you can keep me from her. Then I'll have to use an illegal way.
What price did she offer you, Sheriff? Take a choice, Jardine. Use your gun or ride out. Every minute of every day, I've spent working out my sentence. I thought about what I'd do when I got out. All I wanted to do was to find her and kill her. I told you I was no good with a gun. Get it over with. It is over. I had to be sure. I don't understand. You'll find out. Fire your gun. I turned the cylinder so the empty under your hammer would come up next. Why, Sheriff? Jardine, the man you killed five years ago. Why did you do it? He was a rancher. Owned the land next to ours. He kept chasing after Nita. I didn't like it. I didn't know she was deliberately leading him on. The man you killed was shot in the back and robbed. How do you explain that? I served my time. I pleaded guilty, remember? Do you know any stronger evidence than that? Just one thing, Jardine. If you have any idea of harming your wife, forget it. Don't worry, Sheriff. I've been waiting for you. Did you see my husband? Yes, I waited for him outside of town. I figured there'd be less trouble that way. Is he... Is he dead? You were wrong about it being a fast gun. He was really very slow. Five years in prison. I guess it makes a man rusty. I guess it does. Unless, of course, he wasn't a very good shot to begin with. We can be together now. If you want me. I don't. You see, I wasn't a very good shot myself today. I never did get that bullet into your husband. I should have known. A man like you. You played me for a fool. But I'll make you sorry for this. Yeah, there's just one thing I don't understand. Nice, good-natured fellow like that. He's not your type at all. How come you ever married him? I had a drunken father and a whining mother. And never enough to eat. I took what I could get. And you got rid of him the first chance you got. You think you've won, don't you? Well, you haven't. If you're thinking of asking for Billy's help, don't. I'll do what I please. And you can't stop me. Or Billy. Come out here to help me fix this doggone fence. Not a chance, Billy. Yeah? Well, they're off. I ain't working. Well, what are you doing out here? Well, I come to do a favor for a lady. The prettiest gal I've ever seen in a month or two. <laughs> Smell that. Sure wish I had a gal send me sweet smelling notes like that. Something wrong, Billy? Well, I don't think so. Uh. Do me a favor, Tammy. You want to finish putting up this fence for me? I gotta, I gotta get back to town. <laughs> hey now! I waited for you here in your room. I didn't expect you to come back. What did you expect me to do? Run? I never did know what to expect from you, Nita. It's my turn to return the favor. I, I deserve being hurt. You must know I've wanted to kill you ever since the moment I found out what really happened. I called a man out because he'd insulted you. He laughed in my face because you'd been chasing every man in town. You didn't believe him then. But I do now. You were frightened when you found out I'd gone after him and what had happened. You weren't sure you could fool me again. So you begged him for money to get away on him. When he refused, you shot him down. I didn't make you confess to the killing. What else was I supposed to do? Admit my wife was just what he said she was and worse? Besides, maybe I still had some faith in you left. Faith in me? That's a laugh. You couldn't believe anything but the dirt other people carry to you. Why do you think I did what I... I did. It was because of your distrust in me. 
I could see it in your eyes every time you kissed me. Go ahead and do what you came here to do. No. I guess I can't help how I feel. I don't want you dead. I want you alive and mine. I wouldn't stay with you if you were the last man on earth. That's where you're wrong, Nita. You're going to be mine, all mine, or I'm going to put a noose around that lovely neck of yours. There's no statute of limitations on murder, Nita. And I can prove you killed that man in cold blood. <laughs> Heaven, you got my message. He came back, huh? Yes. He's worse than he ever was. I tried to make him go, but... What's the matter? Oh. What's the matter? Let me see. Did he do that to you? If he hadn't gotten half drunk and fallen asleep, I could never have met you. You still up there? I, I'm even afraid to go back and get my clothes. Well, you don't need to be. Billy, be careful. He'll shoot you in sight. I hope he tries, Nita. I just hope he tries. Wake him up. I can't gun a man down like that. You're a fool. You, you didn't give him a chance. That's right, Billy. He never had a chance. You planned it well, Nita. Kill him with Billy's gun, Billy's bullets. Are we going to testify in court that Billy broke in here while you were both asleep? That he killed your husband in a jealous fury? Why did you have to interfere? Why? You stand trial for attempted murder. There was no evidence against you, Nita. We're even just the same. I need a signed statement from you, Ben. You'll get it. You won't like prison, Nita. A woman grows old fast in prison. What do I say now, Patrick? Nothing, Billy. <laughs> Buckets now. We'll be glad to fill them. Step closer, folks. Now, before I start to parcel out the water, I have a little bit of bad news for you. Due to the continuing lack of water, I have been forced, yea, compelled, to raise my price. But uh, I'm sure that you'll all bear with me in this emergency. 
ten solid months without a drop of rain. Well, at least the drought's doing somebody some good. Gray Eagle freights in every drop of water this town uses. And the longer this drought keeps up, the higher he raises his prices. Fine day, gentlemen. Oh, I'll deliver the barrels of water for the city later, Councilman. I suppose you've raised our prices, too? Of course not. I feel it is my civic duty to hold the line on the official deliveries. But now that you mention it, I... I don't know, no, no, you, 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 you patchy bloodsucker. There must be other ways of getting water, and I'll find it if I have to talk the town council into hiring a rainmaker. Yeah. Rainmaker? <laughs> And they call us Apaches superstitious for our medicine men and rain dancers. Uh, Gray Eagle, you know, I wouldn't exactly count on it being superstition. I was reading an article just last week in uh, Harvest Weekly about a Frenchman who's come up with a scientific way of uh, making rain. I still say it's superstition. And if it isn't, the rainmaker might keep in mind that I'm still an Apache. <laughs> get here? Yeah. The council actually hiring a rainmaker seems like a pretty long chance to me. With that red-skinned high binder and a catbird seat, we've got no choice. Well, if your cloud buster works, your problem's over. Yeah, but if it don't, I'll never pull another vote as councilman. I talk them in the hiring, Russell. And what's more important, Gray Eagle will have Lincoln over a barrel. Permanent. A water barrel. Must be a welcoming committee for the water wagon, gentlemen. Ooh. Yes, a welcoming committee, but not for you, Mike. We've got a rainmaker. Must be a Sioux medicine man. Uh, Vittorio here makes rain for the Apaches. Myself, I would rather not depend upon rainmakers. After staking out the only spring still flowing within a thousand square miles, you don't have to, and no Apache ever called that a sacred spring till you put the idea in their heads. And now they won't let a white man near it now, Mike. Well, you're a highway robber. I was taught the white man's ways at mission school. You'll have to move on down the street, Sonny. You were sort of expecting someone. I said, Sonny, you'll have to move on. on me, mister, and I'll slit you. Sheriff? I'm sorry, miss. I... Uh... I know. I'm Hank Russell, the, the rainmaker you ordered. <laughs> I like the white man's new ways. A female medicine man. So what next? You, miss, are a fraud. Hank Russell. Short for Henrietta. Uh, this is Mr. Forrest, our councilman. How do you do, Mr. Forrest? How do you do? I'm not a fraud. I can make rain. And if you don't believe it, according to the contract, all you have to do is cancel it. But uh, you have to forfeit the retaining fee. Oh, you must have gone to the same mission school Gray Eagle attended. But you're not going to get away with it. False pretenses. That's what it is. Well, it seems to me if the council was so sure a rainmaker could do the job, you ought to at least give her a chance. But, but, she's a woman. You're done. You're done tooting I am. But what I am has nothing to do with making rain. When a moisture-containing cloud mass is penetrated by an artificially created temperature inversion, there's only one result. Precipitation. Rain to you, mister. Besides, you're going to have to pay for the job anyway. Why not let her try? All right, Miss Russell. 
make your rain. That, since you've taken such an interest in this matter, I'm appointing you to look after her. Oh, no, wait a minute, I'm no guardian angel. No, you're the county sheriff. It's up to you to look after the best interests of the county. That makes taking care of her your job. And just in case her competitor gets some Apache ideas for a change, <laughs> You know, Mr. Forrest could be right about Grey Eagle. He's got this town right where he wants it, and he might resent interference. You might need a friend. I don't take anything on say-so, especially friends. Try me. All right. You can start by finding me a big tub. Well? There's not a store in this whole town that carries the kind of tub I need, Mr. Sheriff. The name is Pat. Pat. It's got to be galvanized and big. A wash tub or a water trowel won't work. You get everything else out of that wagon. What happened to your tub? Ah, uh, some drovers shot up Black Creek when I was there and my tub got in the way. Last I heard, the hotel cook is using it for a sale. <laughs> a big galvanized tub. Well, as far as I know, there's nothing like that in the whole county. Hey. That'd work. Uh, she much obliged to you. Huh? I'll take care of her. It's not not exactly the shape I had in mind, but but it sure is big enough. Ma'am, can I gonna help you? What uh, what are you doing? No, wait, 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 don't do that. What are you doing? That'll do just fine. How much? It ain't doing for anything. It's not for sale. I said how much? Uh, I say it ain't for sale. All right. Pat, it's your duty to confiscate this tub for the welfare and best interest of this community. Wait a minute. Now wait. What do you mean confiscate? Is that for Mr. Tumble, Billy? That's right. He had to ship in from England. He's bringing civilization to the West here. Now, I ask you a question. What do you mean confiscate my bathtub? Billy, the town council hired a rainmaker, Miss Hank Russell, and Miss Russell needs a tub. A ra female rainmaker? You might as well hire a Hopi Indian dancer done just as much good. Now, just a minute here. How do you know so much about it? Well, because I used to... Oh, before you two continue this fight, maybe you should be introduced, Mr. Billy Bonney, Miss Hank Russell. Well, the circumstances, I can't say I'm glad to know you, ma'am. Now, look, Billy, I gotta have that tub. Oh, the answer is positively, absolutely no, you ain't getting it from me. Okay. Pat, let's go see the judge. You know, wait, 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 wait just a doggone minute, Patrick. What? Billy... The city council could have the judge condemn and buy this tub. You'd save a lot of bother if you volunteered. Yeah, I see. All right. Just my luck. This would be Tunnel's week. He wants to take a bath. Patrick? Yeah? It's bad enough you confiscating this tub here to... Give that lady medicine, ma'am, but I gotta, I gotta look out for them two vultures across the street there so they don't cook up something to stop her. I'll take care of Miss Russell. Well, you take care of Miss Russell. I'm gonna take care of this tub here. And listen, uh, you bet your bottom dollar I ain't gonna let Mr. Tundle's tub out of my sight. I don't mind your company, even if your manners could be improved. I, uh, look, it's nothing personal against you, Miss Russell. It's just that this tub here means an awful lot to me. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry, too. Uh, I think I liked you two better when you were fighting. Come on, let's go. Listen, there ain't room enough up here for all of us, Patrick, so I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll see you later. I've heard of white man's great medicine to bring rain. Old squaws talk. If you succeed, you will lose face. And money. Maybe you're right, Vittorio. I think she should be discouraged. Oh, Vittorio. No violence. Remember, we're civilized Apaches. reach the proper stage, I just lift up the lid and <coughs> the fumes invert the atmosphere. Oh. Almost always rain. Almost? What do you mean? This thing might not work? We're out here in the middle of Apache country? Well, it's not the best place for rain, according to my calculations. 
Yeah, it's the best place for a massacre, too. Especially if Mike Gray Eagle and his pal Vittorio have anything to do with it. You tell the others to fire on my signal. But Gray Eagle says we are civilized Apaches. And the white-eyed men, our pigeons. Not if the white woman's rain medicine works. Besides, we will not kill them, we will just drive them away. Clear out of here, they're gonna start trying. Well, we've got nothing to gain by hanging around here. I ain't going nowhere. I got a job to do. I got a contract to make. Hank, this is Apache territory, ceded to them by treaty. They're wanting us to get out of here, and they mean it. Oh, I refuse to leave my job. No! They do have Mr. Tundle's bathtub. Yeah. Oh, you think we stand a chance of pulling it out, Patrick? Not unless you want an Indian war on your hands, and Gray Eagle's just the man to start it. Yeah, you sell rifles at both sides. All right, come on, get up. Stop. camps around my bathtub out there watching the smoke come out. Now, how long are those chemicals going to keep smoking, Hank? Oh, a day or two at least. Look, Billy, I'm sorry about the tub. I know how much it means to you. Not half as much as it means to Mr. Tundle. Well, he can always order another tub. It's my equipment. You know, without that, no rain. No rain and Gray Eagle owns us all. I got it. I got it. I know. How about charging him with stealing my tub? He's too smart for that. What do you mean? Billy, he's got an alibi. At the time of the attack, he was right here in town attending a meeting of the council. Maybe I can find some water. Oh, the town well dried up here about two months ago. Everything else wet belongs to Gray Eagle. Maybe not. There's more than one way of finding water, you know, and I know them all. Where are you going? I'm going to find me some water. Didn't I? Yeah, sure. Already in a tank. How convenient. What are you going to do now? Keep right on looking. Dad, I found it. I found water. What, what's now? I found water. What, 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 where? I just got to dig for it. Uh, just a minute, young lady. Look, all you have to do is persuade the council to order a well dug. Well, why do I have to persuade the council? They'll pass a petition for free water. Where do we dig for well, it? Come on, I'll show you. Come on, where's the water? Here. It's where? Right. Hey, never mind, I heard you. You mean it's here, right here in the middle of the street? Right in front of Gray Eagle's office. 
Yeah. I wasn't wrong this morning. The water's here. The rod led me back three times. There must be an underground spring, and <laughs> Gray Eagle doesn't own it. It's town property. How far down? You gotta dig to find out. Oh, the council's gonna howl. Well, the council's getting thirsty. And uh, Gray Eagle raised his prices again this morning. Come on, let's give him the bad news. Dust, 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 that's all they're digging up. Now, we sank shafts in that street when we built Lincoln. There was no order there. There ain't none now. Well, why didn't you say that when the council voted on the well? Pat, the elections are coming up next month. I advocated the rainmaker, remember? If she don't produce, you don't get reelected. John, you are caught between a rock and a hard place. Pat, we all are. Mm. We can always go to work for Gray Eagle. Good evening, Miss Russell. How'd you get in here? The room clerk will be missing this soon. You take one more step toward me and I'll show you a thing or two about taking a scalp. Scalp? My dear young lady, I am a civilized Indian. I'm not so sure about you. Well, what are you here for? I just came here to talk. Would you mind putting that thing away, please? All right. Talk. You're bound and determined to give this town water. And you're lucky enough to do it. One way or another. Why? Because I'm being paid to do just that. It's not my luck that's worrying you. You know there's water here, and you know I'll find it sooner or later. I'll give you double the amount this council is paying you, if you leave Lincoln. No, sir. These folks need that water, and you're cutting their throats. We could be partners. No. I want Lincoln to have water, but free water. As long as we're asking questions, I'll ask one. Why are you out to skin these folks? You really want to know? Yes. Yeah. My people had their lands taken from them. They were herded onto a reservation your government thought good enough for them. They were given hoes and rakes to till a land that could not grow good weeds. They were a proud people. But they agreed to a treaty that humbled them. The brave ones, Geronimo was one, took a course of vengeance against the whites. What about you? Me? I just went to the white man's school and learned his ways. I found you could scalp a man without lifting his hair. Just lift his pocketbook. It hurts more. Well, even if I agreed with what you're doing, I've got my job to do. I'm not leaving Lincoln. And I'm going to find water. Is that your final word? Yes, sir. Then I can't be responsible for what my people may do if they decide that you are an evil spirit. <laughs> What is it, Billy? Hank's gone. What do you mean she's gone? I went by her room just now, and the door was unlocked. The light was still burning, and I found this on the floor. She wouldn't forget that. Not unless somebody made her leave it behind. That's right. I got the horses outside. This woman claims to make rain by the magic of the spirits in the tub. It has worked for days. There is no rain. Her magic is no good. I say they are evil spirits. We must be rid of them. And her. There she is. And they're right on in. They won't start anything with us. They're civilized. Yeah. What odds are you quoting, Patrick? Russell loose. 
Victorio, I'm going to hit you and Gray Eagle with everything in the book. Kidnapping, assault, battery. Not unless you want to start another Apache war, Pat. Besides, this is not my idea. Victorio here is the shaman of our tribe. We drive the medicine squaw of the white men away. I, Vittorio, want to show you the, the foolishness of her medicine. Just because you apologized and, and returned the tub, that doesn't automatically put you in the clear. You, you still have a charge of kidnapping. You would have to arrest the whole tribe to make it stick, Pat. Uh, he's right, Pat. And besides, I decided not to press charges. I mean, what with me being a member of the tribe and all, I figure he suffered enough setbacks for one day. Who suffered? My tub is the one who suffered. My tub has more dents in it than a washboard. What, what, what am I going to tell Mr. Tunnel, Patrick? Inferior product of the white man's factories. Inferior product or not, Mr. Tunnel can sue you for damages. With this rain, I'm no longer in business. Besides, you can't sue an Indian. It's in the treaty. Oh, oh you, you said that you did it, Miss Hank Russell. I'm as good as re-elected. <laughs> you speak too soon, Mr. Forrest. What are you talking about, you, you, you vulture? Eagle. With my water supply business washed out, so to speak, I have decided to enter politics. I'll be running against you for councilman next month, Mr. Forrest. No, 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 no just a minute. Uh, Indians can't vote. Have you read that treaty? No. It specifically provides for a representative of the tribe to, to sit, sit in, in on, on the, the white, white man's, man's council. council. Good day, gentlemen. Miss Russell. Vote Indian. Can I ask you a question, Patrick? What is it, Billy? You suppose there's anything in the treaty might make him president? <laughs> for a high one. Sheriff, it's a great pity to have to stay indoors. Especially with the windows closed. That's a bat. Yes, the game is called baseball. It was invented by Alexander Cartwright and Colonel Doubleday. So maybe I should hold them responsible for breaking my windows. I'll pay for it, Mr. Garrett. You'll do no such thing. It was entirely my fault. 
I'll replace the glass. I'll have to live away in my conscience, too. Won't be necessary, Padre. I've been trying to get it open all summer. I understand you have a wedding schedule for this afternoon. Yes, one o'clock. Maria and Felipe. Dominus Vobiscum, I'm already three minutes late for the Angelus. Will I see you at the wedding, Sheriff? I wouldn't miss it for anything, Padre. Come on, Danny, you can help ring the bell. Danny! What do you want? Be good, Padre, and you won't get hurt. We're taking a little trip. Get over here, kid. Next comes banking, of course. <laughs> Married is a pretty girl you have here. Morning, Sheriff. Morning, Target. Big day for him, huh? Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> Still time to change your life, Felipe. Maria here ain't uh, got a brand on you yet. <laughs> oh, you're a lucky hombre. What do you say, Patrick? Really? Well, you got to hand it to Padre. Ever since he came to Lincoln, there's been a lot more weddings and funerals. Billy, have you seen him around anywhere? No, I ain't, but you know the Padre. He's probably down the road somewhere after visiting somebody down with a pip. He'll be here in a minute. It's not like him to be late for anything. Mr. Garrett! Billy, what happened? He said to give you this. He said he killed the Padre. What are you talking about, Danny? Who said he'd kill a partner? Here you go, Danny. Drink this. You say he had two horses? Yeah. Where he left the wagon, about a mile out of town. Told me to start walking back. And he said if I gave that note to anyone but you, he'd kill the Padre. We're wasting valuable time here, Patrick. Danny, had you ever seen this man before? No. Look, why are you talking? I'm going to round up some men. The few people who know he's been kidnapped are better. Yeah, what are you going to tell them over here at the church? You're going to tell them. Tell them the Padre's been called out of town suddenly. No sense of breaking the news until I find out how bad it is. You planning on going alone? That's what the instructions say. I've got to follow them. It ever occurred to you this could be a trap, Patrick? Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's you he's after. Well, if he is, he's going to find me. I'm not alone. Really, do I have to lock you up to keep you out of this? Sit still. Where's the Padre? He's safe. 
A little messed up, but alive. First churchman I ever saw with guts enough to jump a man with a gun. Which proves you've never met many men of the cloth. What are you after? Money. I want lots of money. Fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollars? Nobody in Lincoln's got that kind of money. There's more than that in your bank. And if all the Padre's friends get together... Why the Padre? Because he's got more friends in Lincoln than anybody else. Friends who'll hunt you down if anything happens to him. I ain't worried. Now, you get that money this afternoon. And you'll be back with it before 5 o'clock right here. And don't get any ideas, Garrett. Anything happens to me, and only the buzzards will find where I got the Padre. I'll be back. Sure you will, Garrett. <laughs> Patrick. He's a dangerous rattler and harder to reason with. He'll kill the Padre if I don't bring $50,000 to Stone Canyon by 5 o'clock. Loco. That's the trouble, I'm afraid he is. Take it easy, Billy. Padre's a friend of mine. Mine too, but this is a problem for the whole town. I've called a meeting at the bank in half an hour. Get everybody there. Do you think you really killed the Padre? time to get word to everyone, but time is running out for the Padre. It's a case of his life against your money. Now, I'll give it to you straight. I don't know for sure that the Padre is still alive. I can't guarantee that by paying the ransom, we'll get him back. And I cannot promise to recover your money if the ransom is paid. Mr. Garrett, saved up $11 to deliver him groceries. Thank you, Denny. Folks, I wish raising the ransom money was as simple as all that. What's the matter? Ain't the bank got 50000 Of course it has, but I, I just can't turn it over. Why not? Everybody here is willing. Well, it's not as simple as all that. There are laws governing banking. You understand my position, don't you, Mr. Garrett? Yeah. Most of our big depositors live out of town. Now, if they agreed... Mr. Harkins, will you keep the bank open if we can round up the rest of them? Well, certainly I will. Good. Billy, you get tundle. Some of the rest of you ride out to Blackhorn, Harvey, and Travis. Come on, Danny. You're gonna run out of time, Patrick. Billy, there isn't any other way. Mr. Harkins? Yeah, Billy, you want something? Yeah, I, uh... I just thought of another way. Yeah, what's that? I want that 50,000 now. You better go tell the sheriff that Mr. Harkins has got himself locked in his own bank. All right, all right, all right. Take it easy. Hold it. Sir Garrett. Harkins, what happened? It was Billy. He stole the money. He's gone after the padre.
Drop it. What happened to Garrett? Couldn't make it. I brought your money. You throw it down on the ground and clear out. Where's your pantry? I'll turn him loose. I've dropped the money. Not until I see the pantry. You're in no position to bargain. You do like I said. You've got just one second. You kill me, you'll never see that money. Step down. All right, back up. Where's the money? Safe from any tricks. Show me the Padre and you'll get it. How do I even know you got the money? There's the rappers that came in. Padre ain't been hurt yet. But that's no sign he won't be. And you're gonna make me believe you ain't already killed him. Grab your hands and back your neck. Turn around. All right, get moving. I'll tell you where to go. Padre. My own fault. I'm not as fast on my feet as I used to be. Why did you come? Well, some of your friends got up a little collection to bring you back, Padre. I made sure it got here. Alone? Well, I figured I'd make as good a messenger as anybody else. How much? Fifty thousand dollars. Fifth? I don't know what to say. To think they thought that much of Bill, it was a mistake to come here. He'll never let us go. Well, maybe he won't have any choice in the matter, Padre. That Garrett and half the men in Lincoln are going to be after him. I'll take my chances. All right, you've seen him. Now, where's the money? You uh, turn the Padre here loose, and I'll uh, take you to the money. Uh-huh. Now, I'm through fooling with you. You come up with that money, you're going to take him back to Lincoln dead. Yeah, well, I guess I ain't got no... Choice in a minute. No, Billy, I can't let you kill for me. I ought to kill you for that. <coughs> sure you ain't fooling about the Padre. Don't. You stay right there. The second peril will be for you. Go ahead, Padre. Pray for yourself. You need it. I was praying for you. Praying for me? Don't lie to me, Padre. I was not lying. <sighs> you can kiss that 50,000 goodbye now. <sighs> you turn the Padre and me loose now. You still have time. Shut up! Get over by the Padre. You get the chain off. Padre's my ticket out of here. You tell that posse to stay back in plain sight. They try to stop me, I'll blow his head off. Come on, Padre. Get up. Come on.
you'd kill him if you ran closer. I can't let him get away. Well, what else are we going to do? We let him kill the project. What'd you do with the money? I ain't trying to trick. Didn't work. We can talk about that later. Once he gets over that ridge, you probably kill the Padre anyway. That's rough country over there. Plenty of places for him to hide out where we'll never find him. I say we rush him now. No, not while there's a chance to save the Padre. What chance is there? Better than a thousand yards from here, Patrick. Well, that's impossible, Garrett. You'll never be able to hit him from this distance. We're wasting time. I say let's go after him. You're going to have to kill him with the first shot, Patrick. There ain't going to be time for another. Winds from the west, right, Billy? Yeah. Real gentle. Patrick. Whatever you do, boy, don't miss. He's using the Padre for cover. I've got to wait for a clear shot at him. Yes, in a hundred years, Patrick. Come on, Billy, where is it? Uh, well, now let me see if I can recollect where... Uh... You'll have plenty of time to recollect in jail. Now dig up that money. You're in that badge of yours, Patrick. You, you, you're going to be the death of me yet, boy. I hope not, Billy. It's uh, right under the rock, right there. And I'll just ride along the Lincoln with you to make sure you don't weaken on the way. safe and sound. Maria. Well, I heard when you didn't show up for the wedding last week, uh, Felipe got cold feet. She had to start all over again, talking him into getting hitched. <laughs> Perhaps that's what we should find for Billy. A nice, persuasive girl to settle him down. It's a good idea, Padre. You find the girl, I'll even volunteer to be best man. Yeah, well, thank you anyway, Patrick, but I think uh, married and buried sound too much alike for me. Padre, you work on him. I've got business waiting for me at the office. Listen to him, Billy. He might find a way to keep you out of trouble. Marriage will do that, Billy. Yeah, well, you gotta find the right gal first, Padre. I see you with a lot of girls. There is Sarah, Rosita, Alan, Margarita, Samantha, Rita. Yeah, well, I reckon the trouble is I just can't pick between them. Padre! You said you'd show me more about baseball today. First, I've got to change. Perhaps Billy will help you until I'm ready. No, no, I don't, I don't know anything about, uh, uh, what you call it? Baseball. Then perhaps you should learn. Maybe that'll keep you out of trouble. Here, you hold the bat like this. 
That's right. And then what do you do with it? You hit at the ball. Go over there. Danny, come here. I don't think he'd strike the man on the floor, but if I were you too, I'd run like a... everything.